to who makes the best insulation driver and can they be used as a daily alternative to using something like the DCD 701 or the 3404-20. So I'll get these on the dyno, run through the batteries like normal. We'll take a look at some of the features for each of them and how all of these accessories compare. I'm gonna go ahead and dyno each one like normal here. Uh, three pulls each per battery. I'm not gonna make you watch all this. We'll go ahead and skip ahead and look at the data here. Wow, so some very interesting results here on the dyno. Not exactly what I was expecting. Now I know this table may be a little hard to view here and I apologize, but I mean, Milwaukee has about 20,000 different batteries. Nonetheless, the, the wall here definitely outperformed the rest and is the clear winner when it comes to watts. When we look at torque, same scenario. The DeWalt is quite a bit far ahead of the competition. Now we look at the table in comparison to other 12 volt drills I have already tested. Now you can clearly see that DeWalt there coming in near the top. I was expecting maybe 701 numbers, not quite that, but pretty close. Actually beating out the previous generation regular Milwaukee there with that 328 watts. We move on down the list. We can see that the brushless Batabo there coming in second. The brushless Bosch, brushless Milwaukee, brushed Bosch, brushless Hilti. I was quite surprised by this. Um, I did expect it to do near up the top, but I just did not see it with this. And then the brushed. Metabo. So we look quick at LEDs. I would say they're pretty much even across the board. For Hilti did a good job here putting two LEDs there on the sides. I do definitely like that. Now all these can be used as hex drivers without an attachment on them. One thing to note is how strong the magnets actually are. So with just a hex bit in there, we barely lifted the tool up before we dropped it. Batabo, we can actually pick the tool up. Bosch, pretty weak there. Milwaukee, we can barely pick that tool up. The actual brushed Bosch there has a stronger magnet than the brushless. Hilti. And Matabo there. So definitely the brushless Bosch has the weakest magnet installed. If clutch settings are your thing, 20, 20, 20, 20, 16, 15. Now attachments wise, the Milwaukee 3 8 fully steel chuck, ratcheting, straight hex with locking collar, 90 degree, offset with a magnet. Metabo 3 8 chuck, Ratcheting, 90 degree offset. And that's all that will actually come in the kit. You have to purchase the offset separately and it does have a locking collar. Bosch, 3 8 chuck, non-ratcheting. Your straight hex with quick disconnect, 90 degree. And the offset with the disconnect. Hilti, half inch chuck. Ratcheting, 90 degree. Your straight hex there with the quick release. Your offset with a magnet. DeWalt, 3 8 chuck. Ratcheting, 90 degree offset. Your straight hex there with the quick release. And your offset with the quick release. So if we talk about Milwaukee here for a minute, 
yeah, it's the oddest looking one here. And on the front, it does have a magnet for storing bits, which, yeah, it's kind of nice. But this thing looks like it belongs maybe in the space station. Definitely a little more overcomplicated than it needs to be when talking about position change. Now, it is quite interesting. You have this lock feature, of course, preventing the trigger from actuating. You have to hold down the center button, and then you're in reverse. You have to hit it again to be in forward. Ergonomics-wise, I don't care for it at all. You're going to have to put your thumb up here on top and try to push that. I don't know what was wrong with the shuttle down here like a normal drill. Attachments-wise, pretty straightforward. And I do like that after your 90, it is locking. So whatever you put on here, like the offset, it is locked in place. And I do like that this offset is a low profile. Other than that, I think Milwaukee could have done a little better here. Well, they actually did, and you'll see that in an upcoming video. Metabo, yeah, kind of like an impact driver. A little bit weird with this battery release here on the back. Other than that, your 90. Locked in place, but when you lock in your offset, you can see your offset can pivot around on its own. Don't really care for that. The wall, really nothing different here, other than it doesn't have a chuck directly attached. It almost looks just like the 701. Pretty straightforward. Locking it on, your offset. We'll lock in place like so, so it is fixed. Wish this was a magnetic collar instead of a locking collar to try to give you a little bit more, maybe. It's right on the line there. Hilti, non-locking offset, don't care for that, but I do like the low profile magnetic holder here. Bosch, unlike the others with just a quick release collar, here we actually have to install it and then twist this twist lock here to actually lock the attachment in. Same can be said with the offset. Now it does lock, so it won't spin around with the 90, but I'd say it's definitely different. I don't know if it's totally a negative, but it is different than the rest on the market. And you do have a quick release and not just a magnetic holder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test these offsets. Gonna be pretty simple here. All I'm gonna do is put a bit in here, set it at level, take the caliper, run it up to center, 0.341. Now just a rough measurement there. The majority of them are about the same, uh, but the clear winner is the Milwaukee in this case. And you can see it's a little bit off to the side. It's not right to the center, the rest of them are. And that profile right there is definitely the slimmest. So I think with it being offset, if you really need to get into a tight spot, yeah, this is gonna be the one to have. The Bosch and the Metabo, definitely quite bulky there as well. Now, unlike other drills here, we actually have to take a close look at the cases because, well, we have all these attachments and it would be nice to keep them organized. So let's see what the cases look like that come with each tool. Hilti, nothing uh, real impressive here, just a nice looking contractor's bag. And it has one big pocket here on the inside, which you could throw all those attachments in. But yeah, nothing to really keep things organized. Metabo, hard shell case. Uh, not really much going on here. Basically one compartment in this bottom corner where things would look something like this. Not a real big fan of these style hard cases, but you know, it could work. Bosch, you got this small soft case. 
Uh, not very much room here. Definitely when we're talking attachments. I mean, yeah, it's it's some sort of attempt, but yeah, it's not gonna work very well. It looks like the case was mainly designed to hold a charger, a drill, and you know, a spare battery. So it's something, but yeah, it's not real impressive at all. Milwaukee, soft case as well. Definitely a really nice job at this. I mean, here you have the right amount of compartments. Drop your attachments in there like so. You got a little holder there to Velcro your drill in place. Little battery holder here, charger holder, and uh, another battery holder there as well. Little zipper pocket here on top, and of course a manual holder. So, yeah, overall, Milwaukee did a pretty good job, in my opinion, on the case. The wall, your normal contractor bag, but it does have a insert tray inside here. So you can drop those attachments in place there. Holder for the charger. And the drill like so. I think overall, definitely a pretty good job. You're not gonna wanna shake things around or that's gonna happen. So you ain't gonna be tipping this contractor bag, throwing it around if you wanna keep things organized inside. One major advantage is you can take that tray out and if you're working in a shop, you know, you could put this in your toolbox. With one caveat here, the offset attachment is sticking quite a bit high here. Tray height, you're looking at 2.55 inches. That offset's going to bring you in at 3.5. So comparing attachments and features and the overall performance, I would stay away from both the brushed, Bosch, and... Metabo, if you can help it, yeah, the Metabo you can find pretty cheap now, but when you add the additional attachments and that four amp hour battery, it's quite expensive at the end of the day. Hilti, because of the price, uh, overall quality is pretty good. Now, I do like some of the features like the dual LEDs and then the battery, you just hit the latch lever. And I believe uh, this is also Bluetooth as well, but I was definitely let down by the overall performance of this versus the rest. Fourth place is gonna to go to the Milwaukee here. I don't care for this design. I got something better coming I think you guys are gonna like. I just, I don't know why we went away from something simple for changing direction. It, it didn't need to be complicated. So I'm gonna put the Metabo here in third, basically because it's very hard to get here in the US right now in this brushless form. And you have to buy the additional attachments uh, from what I found, you can't get a full kit. But the brushless version will come with a four amp hour. Bosch coming in second. Overall, if you're running the platform or you have a newer Dremel that uses these same batteries, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, again, kind of weird on the attachments, how you lock them in, but I don't think it would be a too big a problem to get used to. And then the winner here, gonna be the DCD 703. Really impressed by the performance. Very similar again to the DCD 701. I do like that locking 90 degree there. Let us know in the comments if you have one of these and your experience with it. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one.